Hi, my name is Shelby Korn. I am a student in Dr. Frederick Green's online business law and ethics class. Um, this is my IPP presentation and I will be doing an examination of employee evaluations. Um, it was ironic when I chose this topic and when it was kind of selected for me. Um, I was actually undergoing my evaluation at my current job. So um, I probably have a unique lens going through this and I hope by the end of it you'll have picked up on on um, kind of what I was del delving into and um, really learning about employee evaluations, what they consist of, what affects them, and how they are kind of evolving in our workforces today. So the way I kind of structured my slides is um, most of my headings will be questions, and then the content below that will be kind of an answer to that question. Um, and I might post some more questions along the way. <laughs> um, an employee evaluation, what is it? Um, it occurs when an existing employee of an organization is evaluated on various characteristics based on set criteria in order to make determinations specific to that organization's goals or their standards you know, at hand, what, what really they're trying to achieve. And of course, it will be different um, depending on what workplace you're in. Um, and the evaluation will likely be different, um, in a different form at least, probably for different different jobs. But um, most of them are are pretty much set on on that definition, um, and it can be referred to as many different things. I'll use some of these terms interchangeably: um, an employee evaluation, a performance evaluation, performance management, performance appraisal, performance review. Um, and according to management and research firm CEB, they believe um, that this process kind of came about through a man named Frederick Winslow, Winslow excuse me, Taylor, one of the first credited management consultants. So um, he worked for a firm that actually went into other businesses and helped them, um, you know, evolve their processes and kind of become more efficient. And their early efforts were a part of that efficiency movement, which helped to lead U.S. statutes, which institutionalized the idea of performance ratings. Um, and there are several acts that kind of were out of that movement. Um, and then later in the 70s, Aubrey Daniels coined the phrase performance management. So why are employee evaluations completed? Um, and once again, the evaluation criteria and reasoning will be dependent on the specific goal of the organization, um, but typically includes most of these things. And I kind of break up a few of my slides um, it, based on the perspective of the manager or the evaluator position, and then some on the employee um, or the one being evaluated perspective. Um, so from that management viewpoint, um, it's a tool to measure progress or regress. Um, of an individual or the change. Uh, maybe they've grown in certain you know, characteristics that help them perform their job better. Or maybe they are, have remained the same since the last evaluation. Um, it's a tool through which you can critique or commend the performance of employees. And I know this is an opportunity for um, a boss to tell you specifically address you know, some sort of behavior that is preventing you from perhaps achieving a goal or what they think you could do better that would help you to achieve that goal. Um, or maybe it's a time that they can commend you and tell you um, you've been doing great on this and what we want to do is move you forward with more of these responsibilities or we think you're doing great, just keep it up. Um, and that's also a way for employers to provide motivation for certain behaviors. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the thought behind this whole evaluation. Why are you doing it? You're trying to motivate them um, towards one way or the other. Um, you, you need to have an attempt behind it. So um, hopefully your motivation is successful <laughs> and whatever you're trying to, to motivate um, the employee to move towards. Um, and it can determine the effectiveness of current hiring policies. Um, are you hiring the right kind of people? You know, when you're doing these evaluations, you're going to be able to tell things about the employees um, and maybe whether they are working towards the benefit of the company or whether they're kind of stuck in a rut and, and um, not helping the goals be achieved. 
So from an employee perspective, and I'm you saying these in the thought uh, kind of generalized, um, maybe not every employee does think this, but I'm, I'm putting these out here for reasons that you'll probably see later on. Um, but many employees know that it's to meet a company requirement. I'm being evaluated because, oh, the company does this. You know, I just kind of have to get, get through it. Um, and maybe they don't have that specific attitude about it, but it is going to fulfill some sort of um, process that the company has in place um, to fulfill an obligation the employer has as an overseer. Of course, if you are the one um, kind of reviewing everyone's work, I, I think you're um, obligated to tell them how you think you're do they're doing, um, and that's that's what this can be used for. Um, an employee may receive or buy for a promotion or salary increase during this time. I know, you know, if you only get to meet with that person who is your direct supervisor once a year and it's been two years and you've taken on all these additional responsibilities and you don't see your supervisor for another year, you might feel compelled to kind of, you know, put that out there. I don't think that's something that would happen at every time you're evaluated, but I know that that's Kind of something that tends to go along with an employee evaluation, and it definitely has um, kind of that reputation behind it that it could be could could be that time. Um, and then it's also to bring your successes or concerns to the attention of the reviewer. Maybe if you don't see that boss, they don't know um, how well your project went, or that you know this program we're using really it ends up having a lot of errors in our final documents, and there's. We have no control over what the program is doing, um, so I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there's something better out there. You know, an evaluation time when you're supposed to meet with your supervisor and get to, you know, be evaluated and kind of do these things. Um, it's a time for for all of these things to happen. Um, whether they're used always um, for these reasons is another matter. <laughs> So this slide asks, what results from an evaluation? And, and these are desirable results that I put up here. And I once again broke it up between the one who is being evaluated and the one who is evaluating. So from the management or organizational perspective, a desirable result would be an, that an accurate measurement of the employee's chosen attributes uh, or achievements is, is given. Um, that, you know, something that is fruitful is actually taken from this evaluation. Um, it also would be that clear directions given to the employee or valid comments are offered to them regarding their performance. Um, if this is not a time to be direct, then I don't know when the best time would be. Um, and another Thing that would be a desirable result from the management perspective is that it's successful motiva motivation, like I mentioned on the previous slide. Um, and from an employee's perspective, a desirable result might be that um, they leave understanding um, their specific standing within their job duties. They understand um, what they need to do to fulfill that. Uh, maybe they do receive validation for this, their successes and have critique that's considerable and helps them move forward. You know, they get that direction that they need um, and that addresses maybe some of those goals that were not met. Um, and also that the employee would leave with knowledge of the task ahead or the task at hand. Um, if you receive a rough critique or if that's all you really receive during your employee evaluations. You might feel like, okay, I have a lot to work on. But if the evaluator doesn't really help you understand what the next step is, if they don't help you um, kind of develop some sort of plan for how you're going to address those things, um, there might, I mean, it's kind of leaving you hanging. And so I think that is a truly desirable result for both parties at hand. So who is affected by an evaluation? Well, of course, there are several different ways to look at this. Um, so I kind of go from the top down. The organization as a whole should be in some way affected. 
The results of various sections or individuals, depending on the structure and size of the organization, will be analyzed cumulatively in most situations um, for the benefit of the big picture. You know, they're wanting to see how it all is going to work together. Um, or maybe a specific section within the organization might feel a specific effect. Um, if you are in the operations department of your company and you receive um, a lot of critique and are told that you need to work on a lot of things that are failing within your section of the organization, um, it may determine, you know, the direction that your group needs to go. And it's definitely going to affect, you know, your, your individual one, but it can also affect that targeted group. Um, and, of course, you know, it affects the employee. It determines the position and attitude the individual may move forward with. And I take this a step further, um, and this might be a little bit of my psychology <laughs> uh, counseling background, but um, employees' closest relationships are impacted by an evaluation. You know, specifically if it's negative, um, you might say something to your husband when you get home, and, you know, when you're dealing with an employee evaluation, um, you're talking about someone's livelihood or some, someone's, you know, career is something that normally they're passionate about and they, or they spend a lot of time doing it one way or the other. Almost more time sometimes spent at your job than what you're spending at home. Um, so if you come home and you tell your husband that you had a rough evaluation and you're kind of worried about things, um, you know, hit, that might cause him to have some worry, and that's going to directly return to that employee um, and comes back to the association or whatever it may be. Um, so the trickle-down effect um, of an evaluation, whether positive or negative, um, it can be rather large. Um, and then sometimes, maybe, there's no impact at all. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Okay, so now we're getting into kind of the meat of the presentation. What factors affect employee evaluations? Um, the term evaluation itself has connotations that go with it. And by connotations, I mean, you know, those feelings that it kind of gives off of just, just off a word. Um, so when you <laughs> go to have an evaluation, sometimes that first reaction is fear. A lot of people have... Um, you know, real anxiety, but then other people will have, um, you know, that reaction like, oh, finally, I'm going to get to hear about how I'm doing, I want to know, I want to tackle this, I want to move forward, you know, everybody's going to approach it different, um, but in, it is a factor that definitely affects employee evaluations, um, and another is trust credibility, um, in the New York Times bestselling uh, book, Speed of Trust, I've been reading it for work, <laughs> um, author Stephen Covey states, a transparent culture of learning and growing will generally create credibility and trust, even when the immediate results are not the best. Um, so that's in a, a good workplace, where you really trust your supervisor, you trust the person evaluating you, um, and you think that what they have to say is important and relevant and true. Um, so that's important. Transparency excuse me, transparency of an organizational mission. Do you know what your company is about, what they're after? Um, if that's unclear, it might affect things. A lack of structure to review process. If there's not um, a sort of set template or anything you follow, is it working to the best, um, you know, for everybody? An evaluator's lack of knowledge regarding employees' daily tasks. Um, I actually read a, a study that I'll quote several times in here, but um, it also talks about, you know, do employers always know everything that um, every one of their employees is doing, all of their responsibilities? Uh, they may have seen, you know, that chart that lists it all out for everybody, but do they understand what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, And do you feel that um, they understand that enough to critique it? Um, time allocated to the review process. According to a survey taken of accounting practitioners from various industries, only 60% of preparers believe their organization allows them enough time to complete performance evaluations carefully and accurately. Um, and another 24% indicated that they might be rushed. And so I, I included that only 60% because if only 60% believe they're getting enough time, then that leaves another 40% that are kind of 
hesitant, of which 24 accounts that they might be rushed. So what we're what we're seeing here is that maybe evaluations aren't being completed carefully, and maybe they're not being completed accurately. Um, adequate adequate training as evaluators are they prepared to you know sit down with someone and talk with them through these things, or you know prepare uh, the email that they go through to do this evaluation? Have they you know, have they had any training? on what kind of questions to pose to that person, um, whether it's face-to-face -face or over email, over phone, however it may be. So this slide is a continuation of those factors that affect employee evaluations. Um, I actually, I didn't get to read the full book, but a really interesting work by Robin Kessler, um, and she goes through several um, common appraisal errors and she actually has an, append an appendix in the back of the book that lists you know really great uh, definitions for these terms that she coins um, so I'll go through some of these they're really interesting to me um, and she describes them very well so a contrast effect is a tendency to evaluate people in comparison with other people rather than against the standards of the actual job the first impression error are you Evaluating that person based off of the first impression you receive, or are you applying that to every other facet that, of their performance? Um, you know, be it, be it if it was a negative first impression, are you kind of letting that lead the other things that you're evaluating and the results that you're getting? Um, the similar to me effect, maybe they are dressed like you, they like the same things you do, so well, I'm going to give them a decent, you know, evaluation because they're like me. And that central tendency, tendency to rate people in the middle of the scale, even when their performance justifies a higher or a lower rating. And um, maybe you're just scared to kind of go all the way to the top because you don't want to give them a rating where they don't want to work on anything. Um, or maybe you don't want to rate them too low because you're for fear that they might shut down. Um, a recency effect. Uh, tendency to let recent events kind of skew your rating other than events um, and events that were um, earlier in the year or that evaluation period are forgotten. So you're just thinking about the recent things and well she did great on that meeting you know proposal yesterday so I'm gonna let that influence me or maybe that's just at the forefront of your mind. So this is the big one, um, discrimination based on colleagues' experience with individuals, position within the company, salary, gender, sexual orientation. We know all the ways that um, someone can be discriminated against, but there are so many that can affect um, the results of an evaluation or if that evaluation is even being conducted fairly. Um, and then economic societal pressures, those also um, play into things and especially kind of goes back to that connotation of the evaluation if you know the economy is in a downturn and specifically your company is really not uh, performing well in the market maybe your company's laying off some people maybe this evaluation is really something that um, could determine whether you remain in the company there's there's going to be more pressures depending on things that are going on maybe within the company or maybe even just in society as a whole so i include um pertinent u.s laws because it should an evaluation not go well um there are consequences and some legal um, ramifications for things that um, either the employer might pursue or the employee probably the employee most of the time but um, should things not go well or should they feel like they were discriminated against in some way? So these are some of the laws that would become applicable to the situation. Um, the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination based on race, color, sex, religion, or national origin. That's kind of that just main just discrimination. Um, Equal Pay Act of 1963 prohibits differences in pay for equal work based on gender. If someone is being evaluated on the same um, job requirements, like their their specific responsibilities, and you just um, give one a lower evaluation score, doesn't necessarily mean that um, you can pay them less. Um, Age Discrimination in Employment Act prohibits discrimination in 
employment based on age. Um, you can't perpetuate age-based discrimination um, through an employee evaluation. Um, Americans with Disabilities Act, the same thing applies with that. Uh, Family and Medical Leave Act uh, requires employers to reinstate employees to similar positions when they return from leave. Um, and I also kind of took some of these um, from Robin Kessler's work, um, but she she talks about that one in perfect wording. Let me see what she says. Protects employees and candidates who are 40 or older from an employer. Oh, excuse me. That's incorrect. Okay. She says, if employees are given new or tougher appraisal procedures when they return, it may suggest they have not been given a similar position. Um, and apologize, I'm looking down at notes. Um, but that can cause major issues. And if people feel these things have occurred to them and they pursue um, the litigation that would, would come from, you know, targeting those acts, it can really cause a lot of uh, trouble and stress on both sides. So this slide kind of continues on um, with consequences of, of some of those improper employee evaluation practices that may occur. Um, you know, you, the employer can be included, ex <laughs> excuse me, an employer can be accused of negligence and letting unfair practices and discrimination continue and be perpetuated. Um, defamation, you know, the results of those employee evaluations are confidential and um, must be communicated properly amongst those, you know, that involved that need to see those in order to avoid potential liability. Um, and one of the studies that I looked at um, when I was researching this topic uh, was from an, a periodical, I think, that's based towards pharmaceuticals and, and pharmacists, um, but it's called the American Dr Druggist, and they have a specific case in there um, that talked about, you know, this employee that came forward and um, filed several complaints against his former employer um, after he was terminated. And, I mean, he had various complaints, but um, I took this little snippet um, from that periodical, and it says, in considering employment discrimination claims in this case, it is worth noting that the court placed great weight on the credibility and the intent of the plaintiff's supervisor in terminating the plaintiff's position of employment. There appeared to be little evidence to justify the unsatisfactory written performance evaluation received by the pharmacist, especially since the supervisor failed to cite specific examples of poor performance. Um, you know, and it goes on. But it, that just goes to show um, how detailed the process is and how much of that detail really needs to be shared in the evaluation process. It needs to be a really transparent thing uh, to be successful. And I think oftentimes that's probably where things go wrong. So I've already talked about some of the things that, um, you know, affect employee evaluation. So indeterminately, you know, some of these things that can improve employee evaluations are some of those same things, um, but they need to be done well to improve the process. So another quote from that Speed of Trust book, um, about trust, it says the most, the more important desired result is growth, and growth cannot happen without risk. To always make decisions and give opportunity based on past observable performance is to severely limit our ability to achieve great results in the future. So, you know, if growth is what you're desiring, and I'm sure by some sort of evaluation, that's that's what you're trying to determine. Um, Trust needs to be there, and it needs to be there for um, not just things that were noticed in the past, um, but you have to be able to move beyond these things, and um, that's going to really prove the kind of employee you are or the kind of evaluator that you are. Um, you can't just look at one thing and determine how their performance may be for the rest of their career there. Um, evaluation intent must be specified beforehand. I think that's um, something that a lot of evaluations fail to do. And I can say that <laughs> kind of firsthand. That's, that's one of my little opinions. I'll sneak in there. Um, the number of evaluations. Maybe evaluations need to be conducted more than once a year. You may have annual, semi-annual, quarterly. Maybe you need to do more. Or maybe you need to do it less if you're 
over evaluating your employees. Every time you turn around, you have an email you know, form to fill out. Um, the time allocated towards completing proper evaluations, and it must be done in a cost-effective way. Um, another source that I, I referred to, as noticed in a Washington Post article, a company of about 10,000 employees spends roughly $35 million a year to conduct reviews. To me, that's like an astronom astronomical amount. I can't imagine, which I only work for an association that has 100 employees throughout the state. Um, but it doesn't seem like, um, unless you're getting a, all the results and all the data you need about your employees and their performance, I just don't know that that's necessary. And if the employers are not being given enough time to even do it carefully and accurately, you know, based off of that study that I quoted, um, you know, is it worth it? But what what is the intent behind all this? And is there enough time to do what you want to do? What what do you need to devote time towards? Um, specifically, what do you need to devote time toward, for, towards uh, to get a proper evaluation of what's happening? Um, the immediacy of evaluations, maybe um, your project is due by Monday and you receive an evaluation shortly after that, not at the end of the year when you've already completed 10 more projects. Uh, the formality of evaluations, maybe face-to-face -face is the way it needs to be done or maybe long distance is okay. Especially if you're doing it four times a year, uh, maybe three of those could be you know, over the phone. Uh, the consistency of evaluations within an organization and across the field of work. I think if you're using the same format for everybody you know, to which it applies, um, that's fair to say that you're going to get maybe some, some more reliable responses and um, that things won't be skewed, especially if you're using kind of a set uh, template. And then the timing or the training of the evaluator should include self-evaluation of all personal tendencies to increase uh, awareness of bias. Kind of like some of those effects that I quoted from Robin Kessler. Um, you know, the eva evaluators need to be aware of what they may or may not do without even realizing it. Or what they have a tendency to do, at least. Or maybe, um, you know, that awareness can also be increased by trainings. Um, you know, I know where I work, we do diversity and inclusion trainings that make you aware of ways that you may be perpetuating some sort of discrimination. So here's where I'll kind of wrap things up a little bit. Um, but this is what I see happening and um, some of my sources quote these changes and trends that are happening in evaluation um, approaches throughout the country and probably throughout the world, um, of course. but an article posted on the Washington Post website in, indicated 6% of Fortune 500 companies have gotten rid of rankings. So um, some giant names in the business world are implementing strategies where the evaluation process would unfold incrementally throughout the year. Kind of what I was discussing, like more than one a year, especially that annual thing is, is really becoming outdated. Um, some companies that did that, I list Accenture, GE, Gap, Adobe. Um, they have abandoned their former way of doing things in, in lieu of some of these new techniques. In an interview discussing employee evaluations, that CEO of Accenture uh, stated that performance is fluid and what people want to know is an, on an ongoing basis, am I doing right? Do you think I'm progressing? He refers to this uh, way of thinking as instant performance management. And I really like that because we're all about our instant gratification. That is just the way society is moving. Um, and CEB states, it's not hard to see why performance management process has devolved and why companies are now turning to new ideas. So I'm sure you've picked up by now that my argument would be that maybe evaluations aren't as effective as a lot of people think they are. Um, and when you tie this into our business law and ethics, um, there's a lot of legal principles behind what um, employers are obligated to do and what employees are obligated to do. And, and um, the ethics of it all are the current practices truly ethical. 
Um, the big question is, you know, as other companies begin to jump on board with new, perhaps more effective, more reliable, um, accurate forms of evaluation, how will society's view of evaluations evolve? Um, will society come to view these evaluations as you know, something that's really not fair? Um, how will law evolve or begin to be formed around these views? Um, it's, it's crazy to think about where things may go, but I truly think things are evolving. Um, and I'm currently evaluated on a yearly basis, but I have a, a unique position within my company because I work directly with the regional supervisor. Um, so I, I work directly with my boss, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, multiple times a year, I'm still asked to sign documentation regarding, you know, the forms that may be used next year, um, or correspondence about when we're going to meet, or how this is going to work next year. But it's only about that one time of year. So I struggle to think that maybe time um, is being used in the most efficient manner when I think about our evaluation process. Um, and, you know, since I do work with my boss immediately, I probably receive a lot more critique and validation right away as compared to uh, my counterpart that works in another branch um, and is an assistant. So there's definitely some things I, I think that could benefit all of us if they were put into place and, and a lot less questions would be left unanswered. Um, and, you know, I have a different view of it probably too coming from an education major. Um, you want to talk about a career that is full of evaluations that are truly interesting, <laughs> um, that's education for you. And I mean that in the sense that, yes, your students, you evaluate your students, and and there's so many ways that you can do it. Um, and we hear about, you know, the common core testing and all that stuff. But the way teachers are evaluated is actually um, something that the state is involved in. Um, so I, I pose that question. Should the state in which the organization is located be able to intervene in the evaluation of an employee? Um, there's so many, so many different facets to employee evaluations of the topic. Um, and I, I did say very broad in general, but my thoughts moving forward in my current career, you know, that maybe some things could be done differently. And I'm just going to use the employee evaluations that are in place um, to the best uh, you know, ability that I can and to the best of my performance. I'm going to um, use how I'm evaluated um, to better my own practices, but I'm also going to allow them um, to kind of reinforce what I know I need to be doing. Um, so will things change uh, for companies in the near future? Will everybody jump on board? I definitely think so. Um, I'm going to try to help that in my company as much as I can, um, but we will see what happens. I definitely think there's a lot of change ahead. On the next slide, I have my references, and that concludes my IBP presentation for Business Law and Ethics. Um, I hope your next employee evaluation goes well. Thank you.